All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. The second session of the day. Uh, just get things started here real quick with a couple of announcements. Uh, everybody is muted. If you are using the event app, we encourage you to check into your sessions, update your activities, and to please complete the session survey at the end. If you are having trouble, please email us at eventsatfirst.org and we're happy to help. The session is TLP White and is being recorded. Recordings will be available within 24 hours via the app or the desktop mobile site. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to your session moderator today, Alexander Yeager. Alex? Hi, everyone. This is Alex, and I will be moderating this session today. Um, just one item before we get started. We ask you to submit your question using the Q&A section of the Zoom app, and questions will be queued in the order received at the end of the talk. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, most people have heard about passive DNS and it has become a key tool conducting incident response. Jan from NetLab360 will walk us through some examples of how they leveraged a very large data set to hunt web threats. Please join me in welcoming Jan. The stage is yours. Yang, I think you are still muted. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, thanks. Cool. Sorry, wait a minute. Okay. Hello, everyone. Glad to have the opportunity to have a talk with you guys. Uh, my talk today is Data Driving Web Threat Hunting. Let me introduce me and uh, our group first. Uh, we are a cybersecurity research lab of 360. 360 is uh, one of the biggest cybersecurity companies in China, and uh, we supply uh, cyber uh, security solutions to general netizens and uh, to our uh, business partners. For me and for our team, we focus uh, our energy on threat hunting, try to use all kinds of data to catch the newest or the biggest cyber threat. Uh, the word cloud on the right is generated from our blog. Uh, our blog's keywords, through which you can get a first glance of our work. Uh, we have a system called DSMA. For our team, uh, we run the biggest PDS database of China more than six years, and the cumulative domain IP mapping records now over 100 billion. Besides the original PDS de database, uh, we have built a whole DS-based anomaly detection and verification system like we will catch NOD, newly observed domain in real time, uh, and uh, NAD, which is a domain name you know, used to be active in history. Uh, then from a certain time, it goes to silence. And uh, boom, now it goes active again. We will catch it. And other kinds of anomaly like domain name query spike, uh, subdomain name spike, or uh, anomaly access correlation, etc. All kinds of DNS anomaly data will be used as the inputs of the following procedures. The DNS anomaly data will be related uh, with other data dimensions like uh, URL data. The connection between DNS and the URL is very helpful for our DNS anomaly and, uh, analysis and uh, verification. Um, Yang, Web Insight. I, Yang, I think you, sh you share your, um, not the slide you're talking about. You need to restart your presentation. We can see the so slide. Can you hear me? Two. Yeah, we, we can hear you, but you can see the case two JavaScript hijacking slide. Uh, to restart from the from we, we don't we, we don't see this the the um the slide you're talking about. Uh, what about now? Still not changing anything. Uh, We can see, see your, my screen. We can see your screen, but it's the Keynote app, and your move is not your your mouse is not moving. Yeah, maybe try try stop sharing your screen and then share again. Let's see if that. Okay, fixes wait it. a minute. Mm -hmm. 
How about now? Uh, it's just loading. Loading. Still loading. I'm changing my slide. Can you see? No, it's still a black screen that just says um, you started sharing. Let's try it one more time. Just hit stop share. Stop share. Mm -hmm. And okay. then try it. Let's try it one more time. How about now? It's, no, it looks like maybe. Just a black screen. Do you have two monitors? Because do, do, do you share a monitor or the app directly? Uh, I, I test on another uh, the room. It's OK. I see any tips? Um, I'm trying to uh, see. Oh. So we can see now your, again your, now, now we can see your, your mouse scrolling. Now you can see it. No, it's. Away. Now it went away. <laughs> I have a PDF. There, yeah, there, there we go. go. There we go. And now press start share the presentation. There you go. Okay. You. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You're back. Okay. Um, go back to the dance mount and the web inside part. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, dance uh, dance mount is uh, uh, our PDS database. And uh, besides the uh, PDS database, we also run uh, all kinds of dance anomaly checking and uh, uh, ver verification. And uh, the web inside web inside is a functional uh, module which focusing on web threat hunting. It's the uh, uh, Functional logic detail is a key point of our discussion here today. With DSMA and the web insight, the porno cabling, uh, phishing, or the websites had been compromised will be detected in real time. Let's see some real cases first. Can you see me? Yep, all good. Yes. Is that okay? Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, the First case is a uh, website exploit. This is uh, a fragment of JS code that had been injected in many uh, WordPress websites. It's a JS puddle waiting the website's administrator to access. Once the administrator stepped in this puddle, then the code will be uh, steal the admin power of the administrator to create another administrator account. Then the hacker can use the new administrator to log in and do whatever they want. We see it in our data, the name and the password of the new administrator is fixed in the codes. I covered it up so we can simply use it to verify. Here is the result, it works. Uh, we can log in the admin page and uh, with the rule of an administrator so I can do whatever I want. In the past year, we see hundreds of websites uh, had been hacked in this way, and at least three different versions of this kind of attack still being alive. The right screenshot is a picture of part of our data. You can see the cases came out day by day from the uh, first thing, last thing, time column, and you can see the user password data either. I covered the secret part, but you can get what I mean, and you can imagine what you can do with it. We don't scan the whole internet for the real number of the uh, whole compromised websites for it is enough for us to catch this threat and uh, identify the vulnerability. But no doubt that the real number will be very, very high. Uh, case two is just hijacking. See the right picture, which is a code of just script. Uh, the code Below the blue line are the original codes, the normal codes. The code below the uh, above the blue line are the codes had uh, had been injected in the script, the hacker's code. 
when the code being executed, it will create a HTML script node in the page, uh, the request, uh, and then request another URL, then it can do the redirection or change the content of the web page. Also see the content in the red line box, the variable at the first line, SADSDSF23. It's a sign that the current website had been injected. There are many of them. I think uh, maybe different variables uh, belong to different hacker groups or different hacking campaign. This kinds of variables also can be used as a detection keyword, detection features by us. Uh, in this case, we have found 1,207 normal JS scripts had been hacked, affected over 5,000 websites. And they all have the variable uh, as shown before, the SADS uh, blah, blah, blah. Case three, uh, this uh, another interesting case of JS injection. The malicious code is obfuscated in car code. After the simple decode, we can see what they want to do clearly. And the code is deobfuscated. The code will be executed within a zero to point five second delay. And it will generate a domain name according, according the current time step. The TLD, the domain suffix is fixed to RU. The length of the domain name is fixed to 16. With the new domain name, a URL will be composed and it will be loaded in a new frame. It's a web DGA. As we get the codes, so we can calculate all the possible DGA domain names by changing the time step. There will be two domain names per day with fixed URL pattern. If we access the compromised website, we can see the malicious URL request will be sent. See the uh, red line. It's a DGA domain name, but it's a uh, name not resolved. If we keep, uh, keep change the time step to get the, all the DG domain name, we can see it's not endless. It's a circle. Uh, after some time, the domain name will go back to the first. There will be two, uh, 732 different domain names by this algorithm. Right now, we have seen four different variants of this kind of injection, and over 300 websites had been compromised. See the URL pass, always have a rainforest run. So this DGA uh, been called rainforest. The first report about this DGA was around uh, 2012, eight years later, still active on the internet. If you like, you can you know, register uh, the, those DGA domain name and do a little traffic hijacking. Case for Spiteful. Spiteful is used for Black Hat screen uh, search engine optimization. Tons of fake websites or subdomain pages will be dynamically generated and interconnected. So when the search engine crawler approaches one, it will be trapped in the Spiteful for endless working with the noisy data. And then the noisy data will promote the spam or malicious websites ranking score. With the help of our DNSMON NOD and AD data, as I mentioned before, we can catch the spiderpool easily for the new observed domain name or the recently new active domain name is often used by the spiderpool infrastructure as we can follow it if we can find it. Case five is a uh, market card. Market card attack means malicious hacker groups who target online shopping uh, card system. At first, the Magito system to steal customer payment card information. If you want to follow this kind of threat, you can follow the hashtag like uh, magic card uh, scammer or uh, web scheming on Twitter. Here are two examples of uh, scheming code fragments. The left is in plain text and the right is obfuscated. Seems different, but they are of the same function. As the code runs, it will check the user's payment inputs. Once the credit card information is ready, the data will be sent back to a specific address or the reporting gate as shown on the left picture the, in the red line box. In this kind of attack, the online shop's domain name is uh, the victim. The reporting domain name, the reporting gate 
is bad. So we listed the reporting gate domain name and the URL as IOC, which we detected over 50 in less than one year, as shown in the picture. Here is the link of our blog with some details. If you are interested in this thread, you can take a look. Due to different credit card payment methods in different regions like in China, we need to input the password for every bill. So the multi-card attack affects the Europe and uh, North America the most. Uh, okay, last case. The case one to five is kind of uh, special cases, but actually most of what we see is porn websites, gambling websites, fraud websites, and all kinds of illegal uh, promotion websites. For these kinds of malicious websites are uh, using new domain name to invade uh, supervision, to invade block it. They use the new domain name as the new gateway, while the infrastructure they use, like the JS scripts, are always the same or similar. So it's a great feature for us to dig them out. As shown in the picture, those are a bunch of gambling websites. They are all of uh, different domain names, but they have the same JS scripts. The name uh, new jump slash ygs.js and the same codes in it. Also, if we dive into their codes, we can see the patterns are the similar. Here are some examples. We can see that they all like using a setting to a function to delay the loading and then either insert an iframe or insert a script node link to another uh, JS script. Okay, after the cases we have seen, let's get back to our system. Here is a all-in-one diagram shows our whole system process pipelines. The upper part is the real-time process uh, with all the anomaly data like NOD, AND, spike, etc. Our crawler will get its page, the main page, or with the help of our URL data to get the specific URL page and extract all the resources. Then with the help of our history black rule set, like the special keywords in web scheming attack, like the special variables in JS uh, injection cases, the special JS pattern in gambling websites cases, as I mentioned before, we can directly determine whether it is malicious and maybe what kind of malicious it is. The lower part is our daily job. All the data will be stored together day by day. We will run an automatic discovery process, which we will discuss later, to discover the new suspicious data to expand our black rule set constantly. The malicious websites are tagged by the old black rules and the new black rules are automatically discovered. The whole loop process requires only a small amount of uh, our menu review. And of course, the whole process needs the crawler, the passing, the extraction, so much engineering work to, uh, to do, but I, I, I'm not uh, wanna go going deep here. As I said before, we have, uh, we have an automatic discovery process for black rules, right? The automatic discovery process rely on our established features. I listed uh, some of them above, not all, but the majority of the most useful ones. Maybe you would notice that the features are mainly JS scripts related, right? Before we do this whole system, we have a deep an uh, analysis. For endless malicious websites, the infrastructure they use are always the same, like IP. For the continuous hacking campaign, the hacking resources will be used again and again like the scripts or codes. In this way, rather than discovering the uh, malicious website, we want to discover the malicious resources used by the malicious websites or the threat campaign. It's, uh, it's more effective and valuable. These features are based on what we know, which could be suspicious, right? But there are lots of what we don't know. So let's go deeper. Think the website structure. Each website can be uh, Think it can be uh, seen as composed with various resources, and the JS code and the scripts are of the most important, right? And also, each JS scripts or codes can be split into many functional code fragments. So, 
based on this multi-composing structure, we can do lots of statistical anomaly detection. Uh, like, uh, is there a new JS file appears on many new websites? Is there a new same JS scripts with various JS names? Is there a JS code fragment appears in many unrelevant JS scripts? Is there a spike or meaningless variables? Once the anomaly being found it, we can quickly give it a manual check to see what it is. There's a clearly advantage with the focusing on the resources. For example, once we found a malicious JS code or scripts, suppose we found it in at, uh, found it at January 1st, then we can keep tracking what new domain name they use. We can see the hacking activities, not in a separate view, but a hacking group view. We can see the malicious websites in a cluster view. Actually, there will be over uh, 50,000 new porn or gambling website appear every day in China, but we can block most of them within less than 500 JS script URL. Here's some pace need to know. During the development, we uh, of course encountered many unexpected problems. Some of them are just the general engineering issues, but some of them are the bad guys countermeasures, which need us attention. For example, the hacker may use a small piece of code to check if the user browsers, user agent or platform commit their requirements or not, then do a redirection to the real malicious code or pages. And the execution, execution of uh, some malicious code need to wait a specific time. The cases I posted before are just uh, 0 0.5 0, uh, second or one second. But there are some other cases in which we need to stay longer, uh, three seconds or even more 10 seconds. Some malicious codes like you uh, like using a portal or say a gateway JS. The real malicious function code are behind many times of JS redirections. And uh, some websites main page is the empty landing page while their uh, subdomain or some of their specific URL are malicious. Some URL using the fake URL suffix, like the request, like if you request a.html, but it may return with some malicious JS codes. And also some hackers do not follow the HTTP protocol on purpose. For, run, for the request, they may return the error response code, but actually with the data they needed. And a more common issue is uh, some bad actors action are triggered by the user's interaction. With the crawler, we may get the resources used, but we cannot see the execution of malicious acts without the proper interaction, right? In this situation, locate the suspicious code segment and then verify it with our expert knowledge is of the most important. Okay, let's see what we have got. Basically, the result includes two parts. The first is illegal websites, like the point websites, gambling, uh, fraud websites. We can see over uh, uh, 40,000 every day. And uh, our cumulative data is over uh, 40 million. The second part is the normal websites while being hacked, like JS injection, web scheming, etc. We can see over 500 per day on average and the cumulative data is over 500,000. In this part, we are not aiming to find out all the compromised websites. We only want to find out the IOCs, like the reporting domain name in web scheming cases. All the results started from our DNSMON system, the DNS anomaly data, and uh, the whole system are uh, centered on data process, using anomaly data as input and using statistical anomaly as trigger of our uh, manual analysis. We build the pipeline and the data tells us what we should do and what is uh, the most noteworthy. Okay, my talk is over. Thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you, Jan. Um, there are some questions. Um, the first one was asked by Robert who asks uh, if there are any open source uh, for your web insights? We will open some of our data in the future, in the near future. But uh, the 
uh, program or the middleware we use, uh, we don't open. Because okay. you know, uh, now our company 360 are on uh, Americans list, you know, the block list. I, I don't know why, but I can do that. <laughs> okay, cool. And the other question is from Kunal. Um, how do you infer if JavaScript has been maliciously changed? Is it through crawling target sites continuously? Um, basically, we will uh, check, recheck the malicious JS scripts uh, time and time again. Like uh, one week, one time. We will check if the malicious uh, JS scripts are still alive or not to check the action, to check if they are still alive, but the like uh, the IOC in the codes uh, have changed to see if it changed or not. Cool. And Omar wants to know, um, what do you do if you discover a compromised website? Um, what actions do you take? Do you inform the owner or the owners? Uh, actually, we only uh, produce the IOC for our uh, cybersecurity products to our uh, to protect our customer, but we don't have the right position to block all the malicious websites or the, all the uh, uh, you know the bad actor. We don't have the ISP position to do that. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Um, that were all the questions that have been asked. Um, if nothing else, Young, thank you very much for your talk. And with that, handing back to Tracy. Great, thanks guys. Yeah, we're going to go into a extended break um, and we get things back started at, uh, looks like 14.35 UTC. So about 30 minute break. All right, thanks everybody. Okay.